Yo, it's definitely Cloud Chasing TV, man. We back to finish thing again. You dig? Hey, man, we got some news to report. You feel me? We gonna um, get to it when it comes down to OG a legend. You feel me? Right. Yo, feel me, y'all. Uh, let these people know your name and uh, where you exactly from. I'm from West California. My name Kevin. You know they call me Big Stretch. Got you. Got you. Got you. Well, and like, um, there, you know? yeah. So you like yeah, Nixon Garden, huh? So you you out the projects, Nixon Gardens? I got so, you. So like, um, like man, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Was the '80s or the '70s? I'm a '70s baby, man. I was born in '70, 1970, be exact. I'm 51 years old. <laughs> Got you, got you. So, like, when it came down to it, like, when it, you know, you, you coming from being the 70s babies and you going into the 80s, like, shit, what it was like, family? You know, the 80s was a different time. It was a different time. It was crazy, but it was, it was, it, it was a little more, it was way different. You know, growing up in the 80s, you know, um, gang bangs was totally different. Uh, the streets, you know, the, the neighborhoods, you know, everything was a lot different. Amongst the older blacks, there was a lot of more unity, but the gang banging was a lot different. You know, um, we had to go to school in certain areas. We all had to use the same schools, you know, different sections, you know, different projects. We all had to go to this certain, you know, school together. So. You know, it, uh, it was like a, almost like a war zone, you know, it was melees and, you know, it was crazy. It was off the chain. You know, it's, it's, it's a vibe, oh, you know. Um, so when you come in, like, you coming from that type of environment, like, uh, what age did you actually, like, had to jump off the porch or, like, you know what I'm saying, like, the means, was, it was necessary? It's crazy. I was talking to my brother the other day about this. You know what I'm saying? I jumped, I jumped off the porch young. You know what I mean? Actually, going up in Watts, it's, it's, it's right there. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to get off the porch. It's right there. But I jumped off the porch, you know, elementary, really. You know, um, had to. I grew up in the projects. You know, I had to fight bullies. I'm the oldest of two, bro two brothers. I, it's, I have two younger brothers. So, you know, I had to protect them. I, you know what I'm saying? And fighting bullies and growing up in the projects, you know, getting chased home and, you know what I'm saying, and, and your mama telling you, nigga, you don't run, you better fight, you know. My mama would be like, which one you had a problem with? I ran home one day. It seemed like the whole school was chasing me. You know what I'm saying? I was supposed to fight with one cat. I looked up, there's a whole bunch of people. When I got to the house, my mama said, actually, I was running to the door, bro. And um, she looked out the window because I was yelling my mama's name. It's like 30, 40 kids behind me. Most of them were spectators. And um, my mama looked out the window, she opened the door, then she closed the door. So I thought she unlocked it. When I got to the door, it was locked. And I'm like, I, 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 that feeling at that moment, I didn't know what to think. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I thought my mama just was like, I didn't know what was up. I'm like, no. And I turned around and, you know, face the music. I'm standing on my project unit. And I'm looking at 20, 30 kids, you know what I'm saying? And they laughing. Ah, your mama left. When she didn't leave, she locked the door. And she came around the front, went out the front door and came around. And when she came around, she said, I ain't raised no pump. Which one of them you got a problem with? I pointed him out. She said, whoop his ass. I whooped his ass. After that, I didn't have no more problems, you know what I mean, as far as that was concerned. But I still had to fight bullies every day, you know. You fighting the dudes who got four, five, six, seven big brothers, and, you know, um, it was a different player field, man. Game banging and all, like, you know, you didn't even have to game bang to uh, be accused, you know what I'm saying? No, no doubt. No doubt. If you lived no on doubt. one side of the project, or you lived on one side of the street, and that neighborhood was that, 
kids from another neighborhood gonna consider you a part of that. So peer pressure was real heavy back then. You know, it still is today, but it was real heavy. You know, and then it was like you had no choice anyway. I'm going home, even if I didn't game bang, I'm walking home to the kids that live where I live, and here come the other gang and they chasing us. They're not gonna say, oh, you they're gonna get you too. You sitting in class and dudes used to come, you know, the other gangs, opposite gangs come and they looking in the classrooms. And they'll be looking in the classrooms and um you know, like peeking through the windows, like who, you know, see if it's, you know, opposition's up in there. And if they see so much, I've been in there. And we had homies that came to the, you know, hey, they coming, and we running out the classroom. You know what I'm saying? But teaching was a lot different too. You know, school they they pass you, they care if you, if you, you know, did the work or not. There was really no help from the teachers as far as like if you was getting jumped by some gang members or anything like that, they didn't get involved, they didn't call security, they just they used to be just looking. You know, and, and I, I, I not only witnessed that, I was I was, you know, a part of that. I, you know, I came out of class one day for a, a break and um about six, seven gang members, you know, from the other side came. They jumped me, you know, I'm fighting back without, you know, six, seven guys. Teacher didn't do nothing. We went right back in the class and sat down, bust the lip and continue school. So it was a lot different back then, you know? Yeah, no doubt. So like, you know, with the influence of music, like was music happy in the influence in your neighborhood, even with all this going on? Yeah, music was, you know, um, I grew up on music, you know, our parents, you know, they played all the oldies and, you know, stuff like that, but later in the years, you know, my brother them got in the rap game, you know, actually my brother, um, did the first banging on wax, Power Room Love and all of that, you know, um, I had a brother that was on the Crip side and so I grew up around a lot of music, you know, my brother was signed with Death Row, um, Music touch the soul, you know what, I'm what was what was your brother name, man? What was your brother name? Let him know. My brother name, K. Little Scratch. Call him yes, Bo. Sir. Yes, sir. Young soldiers. Oh, okay. Um, Big Wild, the relatives, Sugar Booger. You know, my brother and them. They 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 was all you know did all of that together. You know, it was it was a team. You know, they just got in the studio and they did their stuff. Signed with Death Row. You know, I I knew Suge personally. Um, my brother and them signed on uh, contracts. They were with Death Row. Um, you know, I've been around my brother with Suge Pac. I know Suge, like I said, personally. You know, I I, I got a lot of stories right. about him and I. Um, but you know, like blacks were a lot different back then in, in, in the eighties oh, okay. and seventies and eighties. You know, and, and maybe the little bit of the early nineties. You know, um, the gang members had more morals, I could say, even though, you know, it's maybe, you know, not the word to use in a sense, but when it came to that, you know, the youngsters today, they don't have, it's like no respect. Right, right, right. Uh, so like when it, when it came down to it, so like, like you said, even Shug was going around. A lot of people would say like Shug was bogarting around that time. Like you know when it came to like Bad Boy, you know other record labels. Like was was that something that was going on on the West? Yeah, you know Shug was. You know he he was a model. Shug was a, Shug was a, was a true businessman. So it's kind of you know because you brought it up. So I, I I might as well go ahead and tell the story because it's facts. I met Suge in 1993. I just got out of prison. So did my homeboy, rest in peace now, OG Big Green Eyes. And um, we got a phone call because you know, Hario was the one that gave Suge that money to start Death Row. Right. And he used to be denying that, but it was facts. 
So Harry O sent one of the homies, you know, was getting out and told him go hook up with me and Big Green Eyes and get with Sugar about getting his money. So a lot of dudes used to go down there and try to get this money from Sugar, just to the Ozone Cats and some of his partners and bottoms. But at the time, Sugar had a lot of real gangsters around him, surrounding him as far as security. You know what I'm saying? And most of them was Compton Pie Rules, you know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of them was my homies. They rest in pieces. Crazy. You know, a lot of people got killed for around this doing this stuff. You know, um, Harron, rest in peace. That was my partner, Bunchy Al. You know, um, actually, he's all the names that Pac missing on his CD. But to make a long story short, in 93, me and my homie Green Eyes and, and, and um, two more people, we went to, uh, it was four of us, went to Interscope Records. It's 1993 when Silk was doing all this. He wasn't sending Harry on no money. He wasn't hearing nothing from nobody. He was, you know, like you said, bullying. Me and two, me and three other my homies walked up to Interscope Records. Facts. No guns. I knew who Silk was, didn't know what he looked like. And I was not told that this is who we going to holler at. But we was told that I'm going to show you this guy. And I want y'all to bring him back to me. Y'all can pay for it, that's it. Easy call. We walk up in the Interscope. We standing around, you know, white people looking at us and stuff. We just looking around. And Shield comes out the side office with this white guy he's talking to him. He's writing some stuff down. And the homie said, that, that, that's the nigga right there, man. Bring that nigga to me. And my big homie Green, I said, come here, nigga. And Suge looked and said, oh, I got to take care of something. And he made a beeline towards the elevators. You know what you like, power walking? Mm -hmm. So he realized he wasn't going to make it on the elevators. And he, he hit the stairs. And we, we chased him up the stairs, bro. I'm right behind him. And, uh, Big Suge. Big Suge, bro. This is 1993. Facts. Yes, sir. My legs off right now. Huh? Say yes, so, sir. Yes, sir. So we chasing him up the hallway, in the scope records, till he's trying to get to death row to his floor where, you know, his bodyguards is at. So I'm behind him and I'm like, "Come here, nigga." And he, I told him I gotta, I gotta do something. But he's trying to get to that office. So my G homie, I said, "Stretch, don't let that nigga in one of them doors and close that door on us." I'm like, right on his heels, and I'm like, "Check it out." Nigga hurt. You know, I'm trying to stop you. stop. I'm behind him. I'm like, come here, nigga. So he tried to he grab the door to go in. I kind of like hit him with the OG clip with the foot. Boom! He stumbles up in the office and startled everybody in there. But the door didn't close. I was right behind him. Bust the door open. And all the bodyguards in there, maybe 15, 20 they They're like, sure, what's up, what's up, what's up? He's like, I don't know, man. These niggas talking about I got to go talk to their own boy. And my G homie Green Eyes stepped into the nigga face like this and said, nigga, I'm OG Green Eyes. Nigga, you finna go down here and talk to Carlos. He did, what Suge didn't know at that time was that my homeboy Green Eyes was a five-star general on the council under UBN, which is present, you know. Okay, so a couple of, like, several of them dudes that was in there was his comrades and they was up under him so usually anybody come up in there they gonna maul you so when they didn't move like you usually do should knew oh these niggas must be somebody because my homie said nigga this turn around told him this nigga finna go down here and talk to carlos let's go chap and we escorted him back downstairs white folks and everybody oh it's funny snoop pulls up in a limo he didn't even get out in the underground park. <laughs> he seen all of us in the underground park and he, he stayed in the limo. So, Sue goes and he talks to the homeboy and um, a half a million dollar check was signed to Harry O, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's, 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 you know, true story facts. Now, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I say about a few weeks later, we was at the summer jam backstage. We was backstage, me and my homie Green Eyes with, and um, it was me, Green Eyes, we was with Mike Conception, my 
my brother Lil Strax, Top Dog, Big Wives, a couple more people, right? And um, me and my homie snuck off to go smoke, you know? So we went and dipped in the cut. Got the backstage passes on. Now, we hadn't seen Suge since this is it. I didn't find out this was Suge until like a week later. Suge and Harron is coming up the back way, and Suge is on the phone. He see us, and he say, let me call you right back. But before they get close, the homie say, you know that is Suge? I said, yeah, that's Suge. <laughs> he walk up, and he say, what's up, Big Green Nas? What's up, Stretch? He said, I want to fuck with you and your homeboy. And he gave us some money. And then about a couple weeks later, my brother ended up signing with Death Row. Damn, gotcha, gotcha. So like, um, like you know, you, you've been a prison, you, you've been a prison, you you've been a prison, and uh, you know, what I'm saying like some of you, like you was talking about, like the UBN, and you got the UBN on the uh, East Coast. Is the UBN similar to on um, the East Coast what it is on the West? They all connected. It's all one entity. You got UBNs, you got BLs, but I, I won't go into, you know, the politics because that's their thing, you know. I'm not a part of none of them, you know, but, um, yeah, they all connected. It's just one way up, but, you know, um, yeah, it's all functional. It's all together, you know, from yeah, my it's... understanding. But like I said, you... I'm not a part of that. You had a relationship. Um, you had a relationship with uh Stevie J, right? Stevie J at the time he was not signing uh Bad Boy. Like, was that some type of conflict of interest or a brother being signed at Death Row? You know, um, actually, Big Dog, I um, I've only been friends with Stevie J a short time. I met him through another friend. And him and I became, you know, friends, and I, I do a little security work for him here and there, you know, but we all good friends. You know, um, actually, he was texting me this morning, you know what I'm saying? We FaceTime, we chop it up, you know, um, Steve's a good dude, but it had nothing to do with the, with that, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, like, um, you know, when it comes down to... You know, you being from Nickerson Gardens, like um, you from Nickerson Gardens, and like what's like what's the relationship with the industry in Nickerson Gardens? Because it's like it's a long relationship, ain't it? You said the relationship with the Nickersons and who? In the uh, industry, music industry. Well, I wouldn't say go and saying that. I would say this though: the, the Nickersons been known to have been, you know, dealing with a lot of different artists, you know, they like to come back then, they like to see the projects, and they met a lot of real homies that got connected with them, you know, it's a few artists that used to come to the projects, you know, um, Juvie, Lil Wayne, you know, BG, you know, Baby, them that came, you know, um, you know, the homies, they, they got a few people, you know what I'm saying, that they, you know, my homie, probably that rest of the PC used to have Rick Ross and a couple other cats, you know, so, been a lot of connections on that level, but not as far as, you know, actually, let me take that back. Top Dog and Top Dog, that's my homie's name, dude, but that's Top Dog. He's been, he been in, um, in the music industry for a while. You know, I remember back when we first started, you know, and um, there was a few groups in our neighborhood, actually, Juvenile Committee, did a few songs with DJ Quick, and, and um, got a few, you know, a few groups. But you know, Top took it to another level. You know, we just we know he ended up getting Kendrick Lamar and, you know, got J Rock and them, and the rest is history. You feel me on that? So, there are some connections. And then Mike Exception, which is Top Uncle, you know, which is my partner, man, you know, Mike. Um, you know, Mike did, we, uh, what was that? He produced, uh, now we on the same game. He produced uh, a lot of different albums, you know, different music. So uh, there's a somewhat connection. You feel me? Got you, got you. Then then it was a um, it was a Nicholson Garden Stevie J though, right? Yeah, it was a Nicholson Garden Stevie J too though, right? 
I, I don't it was know, a Nickerson Gardens, TVJ. Not that I know of. Oh, I got you. I got you. That I know is the one who you know, Stevie J from Love and Hip Hop. That's 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 my you know, place right there. But I don't know no Stevie J out the projects. I got you. I got you. And um, like when it comes down to it, like you know, you hear a lot going on when it comes to Takashi Six Nine, and you got Whack One Hundred. Like you from out the, you know what I'm saying? You from Nickerson Gardens, you know uh. You know, you, you similar to what Wack is like. Is it is it some type of like is it conversation out there that OGs is having, rather than with, with him or against you know, him, uh, his decision? You know, I, I, I'm gonna say this. Uh, you know, you know, I mean, um, you know, some things you know you just don't speak on. Um, I actually was just FaceTiming with Wack 100 uh, not too long ago. Uh, I can't speak on what why, why he chose to do what he did to talk to to dude. You know, um, he had his own, you know, um, reasons, and you know, um, that's what he chose to do. You know, I, I I can't speak on the one way or the other. Now, me personally, I don't got nothing to say to the dude. You know, he's worldwide known that he, you know, he, he told he's a snitch. So. Um, but Wack had his reasons, and you know, and whatever that may be, that was his choice. You know what I'm saying? So, no, no doubt, no yeah, doubt. I, you know what I'm saying? That was his choice. You know what I'm saying? Me, and, you know, Wack is dumb. I, I'm, you know, we both dumb moves. You know, and in, 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 you know, um, you know, um, reputable. My name ring bells. You know what I'm saying? I got but you. I, 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 um, it's just like I said, certain things you. You don't speak on certain things. You just—it is what it is. You feel me? Like Wack One Hundred, he spoke on. Uh, also, he spoke on. Uh, like when he lead the West, you know what I'm saying? He don't consider like it, it ain't the same. Like from California, like the B dogs on Cal in California versus like in other states. Like, do you feel the same way? You know, I'm. I'm gonna say this. Cliff and Bloods is 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 um. You know, we know originated from LA. We set trends. LA set trends. So now you have Crips and Blood nationwide, everywhere. Every different hoods is out. You know, you got bounty hunters, you got Crips, East Coast, you got all type of different neighborhoods everywhere on the East Coast, uh, Midwest. It's gangsters everywhere. You know, it's killers, niggas everywhere. You know what I'm saying? But as far as the gang is concerned, there's a lot of difference because it was different when we started gang banging. You know, when it was, you know, you know, I'm saying this is like my, you know, it was it was a total different. You know what I'm saying? Gang banging is is is, is different from then and is, 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 you you walking up the street, you're gonna get sweated, harassed, chased, you, you know, shot come through different now. You don't see that as much. You see, you know, same things change, you know, they in cars, dudes just riding around with guns, it's whatever. But it's different. You know, um but when you gang back Or your so-called, because when it really come down to it, black on oh, black crime is not what's happening. We not enemies. We make ourselves enemies because we've been indoctrinated with these, you know, these theories. But when it comes down to it, if you are gang banging, right? Which we said we didn't move gang. We didn't socialize with Crips. We might have one or two that was we was cool with. We didn't really talk. And on the streets, that was in jail. But on the streets. We get active, you know. Um, it was it was gang banging, you know. We looking for them, they looking for us. We chasing, you know, whatever it may be. It's a different era now. I don't even think a lot of these dudes even know why they gang bang or know what it's for or what it's about. Which really, to be honest, it really was never about nothing because we was misguided. You know what I'm saying? This this was all part of a design and a plan to keep us divided, bro. You hear what I'm saying? Yep, yep. 
you know, but um, you know, I'm representative and I, you know, it's front line, you know, and I, you know, I'm a general from out of my neighborhood, all that, but that was something I grew up in, like I said. But when we young, a lot of us we don't have our cognitive thinking on. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And we really don't start to mature until you after 25. You know? And so we um we was lost, bro. You know? We was doing what the what, what, what they call it, you know, what everybody else is doing. It, it, you know, like I said, prayer pressure or whatever you want to call it, influence, you know, was the thing to do. Cause everybody was doing it. So, so what, what? back now mm -hmm. and the dollars that I acquired now, I know what I know now. I, I would have never gang bang. I'd have never done a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Um, cause we need to unify. We up against it from all angles, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, these devils got, you know, they got a hold on us and, and, and until we break that chain and that way of thinking, that's the only way we're gonna bring up on the change. And the sad part about it is a lot of the youngsters are so far gone that they're, a lot of them is unreachable. So you have to catch the real youth to be able to set a trend to make a difference in their lives because the future is theirs and, 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 and you have to you have to show them the obstacles that they're gonna be facing and teach them facts when they're growing up as kids. Teach them unity, teach them these things. If none of this is being taught within the home, then we're being taught the imperialistic way. No doubt, no doubt. Mm -hmm. So like it's like if it, like with, with all that you just said, is it like a direct message you want to send to the youth when it comes down to you know what I'm saying them having some of the same uh situations like as far as the upbringing right now in <clears throat> 2021. I got a few things, man. I, I, I like to say, you know, um, first of all, you know, I, I've been shot, stabbed, shot again, stabbed, you know, and um, it ain't fun. <laughs> but been to prison. I've been to youth authority. I've been to camp. I've been to all the halls. I've been to multiple prisons, you know, in California. And um, like I said, I just did 25 straight. However, what I want to say to the youth is that, you know, um, that's not the way to go because we think it's cool. You know what I'm saying? And then the older cats is not really lacing the youngsters. They're not talking to them. And if they are, they're not engaging them right. You know what I'm saying? And so they are receptive. But I'm saying to the, to the youngsters, man, you know, that... um. You gotta, gotta educate yourself. Get your mind right. We're not we're not enemies. We kin. We family. And so we have to uh, teach this to the youngsters, man. Prison is not the place to be. You know, it's a better way, man. You know what I'm saying? Get money. You know, the black on black, that, that shit ain't about nothing. You know what I'm saying? At all times, I'll say a man must defend himself. But because of a color... Because you live over here, you know, but um, it all boils down to the parenting, bro. And see, if the parents don't know what to teach the kids, then the streets will. So that's what happens with most of us in our neighborhoods in the black communities. And the reason that happens is because this style of parenting has been passed on from generation to generation since the time of slavery. These indoctrinations was passed on. The Willie Lynch theory, all of this was done. So... You know, um, I feel like most black parents, we should homestead our kids first. Um, I, 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 can we pick this back up, big dog? Because I'm really, um, I'm at an event right now. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt, man. We appreciate you uh, touching down with us and uh, giving us some type of insight, you know what I'm saying, on what's going on and uh, how OG's coming home. Just one more thing, though, like, you know, you're doing 25 years, you know what I'm saying, straight. Like you said, like, what was one of the biggest things that you might have missed the most, like, you know what I'm saying, besides family? You know, Pac said we never fear in this world, but 
being outside a cage, you know, just being able to, you know, go and eat something that you like. Okay. Going to, to uh, you know, just being able to walk when you want and not having anybody just, you know, you know, like I said, we still not completely free. But I miss being able to just do what I want when I want, you know, being able to walk outside, look at the trees and breathe and, you know, take a walk or go to the store. You know, the the, the, the smaller things and that, that you start to appreciate, you know, when you were in that place. You know, um, and that's another subject we could talk about, you know what I'm saying, when we get back home, man, you know, um, the prison system. The justice need to hear it, you know what I'm saying? And, and people need to know what's going on up in there. Absolutely. I, I, I walked them and I did a lot. You know, I've been to all, like I said, mostly all the prisons. How you doing, big dog? Pretty good. How you doing, sir? I, I, um, I've been to, to, to multiple prisons, man. You know, um, probably over 15, 20 prisons in my life. You know, transferring from prison to prison. And it's a hellhole, bro. You know, I was doing this 25 years. I didn't know if I was going to come home. I didn't know if I was going to make it out of there. If I was going to, um, you know, catch another case up in there or get killed. You know, this is, this is prison. So, um, like I tell these youngsters, man, that ain't where you want to go. You lose your mind up in there, man. You can't be yourself. But, um, no, I appreciate that, though, man. Blessings, OG. Appreciate that, man. We yeah, definitely going to talk about man. man. Yeah, I got some other things we can talk about, man. Some real shit, you know. So, um, we get back home when, when it's good. I, I, I got some at the gym right now. And, um, we should do this little pain sip thing. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Much love to the peoples, man. Love. On it. On it. Yeah, man. So y'all go ahead and subscribe. Y'all can watch a lot of these episodes, past episodes on Wrong Kind of East Podcast. Uh, definitely Cloud Chaser. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we definitely intertwined with all that. You know what I mean? We're one of the hosts, one of the uh, guys who do the interviews. You feel me? So we're going to push content all around the board. We just had um, a wrap up here like earlier, you know what I'm saying, from Murder, Inc., Cadillac Ty. You know what I'm saying? We just had a uh, big stretch. Like, it's, it's just different things going on, man. We pushing positivity. And we definitely going to be in tune with some people from Chicago very, very soon. So uh, stay in tune with that, man. Put your notifications on, man. If you ain't already in tune, get in tune. Put it. We going to put it. It's Duff for the Cloud Chaser TV. Gang.